So during your exam, let's say you see an image like we do here to the right and are asked, what device is this? How would you move the isocenter for treatment? What image modality can you use? And why could these potentially be an issue? Do you plan with CT or MRI? What are some things you QA? What ISO line do you prescribe to? How far does the imager rotate on specifically the icon? How far or what collimator sizes and SDFs are available? Uh, accuracy of unit and gamma angles? And then how do you measure movement? So here we do have the Electa Gamma Knife. So that typically holds 192 to 201 cobalt 60 sources. So here, this is kind of a trick question because with the, the uh, gamma knife here, there, the isocenter is in one spot. So you have a collection of cobalt sources all directed to one spot in the machine. Well, that can't move. What moves is the patient into the machine. So you can move the table, which moves the patient's brain. And so the isocenter doesn't move, but the patient and where you are treating moves to the isocenter. So a little bit of a trick question, but something that's important to note for the gamma knife. So what image modality can you use? So you can plan and use MRIs. Uh, or, you know, plan on and use those. You can watch for the geometric distortion, though, especially at the periphery. And the icon has a cone beam CT attached to it in this little arm right here. So uh, do you plan using CT or MRI? So the MRI gives no heterogeneity correction, but since the brain is so close to water, that is okay. And there's only about six millimeters of skull. So you can use MRI, you can use CT as well. The fact that you can use both is, is certainly nice and or a collection, you can use both of them if you would like. So know that you can use both CT and MRI and why you can use MRI, not just that you can, but why. And that's because the brain is, uh, there's not much heterogeneity and the skull is so, uh, so thin. So now what are some things that you would QA? So you want to QA the shutter effect. You want to QA the timer accuracy obviously the outputs and the profiles. What ISO line do you prescribe to? Typically for the gamma knife, we are looking at 50% here. Now, how far does the imager rotate? So uh, not quite 270 degrees. I would say more than 180 degrees. Try to look it up on YouTube. It's really neat how it works. So there's this arm here and then this moves like kicks out it, it's really cool it, it's interesting looking and unless you actually have a gamma knife at your center you would never know that so uh what collimator sizes so here we have a four eight and 16 millimeter collimator sizes and sfd that is source to focus distance that is approximately 40 cm now, what is the accuracy of this unit and the gamma angles that are associated? So the big driving force to have a gamma knife is that it is extremely accurate. It's fairly simple. And with those cobalt sources, we are able to get within 0.3 millimeter accuracy. Now, in comparison, a linear accelerator is approximately 0.5 millimeter. So it is more accurate. And we have our gamma angles at 70, 90, and 110 degrees. So those gamma angles are the angle that the head can be placed in, 70 degrees, 90 degrees, or 110 degrees, to give you kind of a, a better view of, not view, but access to the tumor as you are radiating it. And then finally, how do you measure movement? So there are infrared markers on the nose. So if this patient, there's a marker right there on their nose. Also, these little black bars you see, they're sticking out into the air. Each of those have an infrared marker on them too. So 
if the system and right here, what I'm highlighting and I'm circling, that is a camera. So this camera looks over here, looks at those infrared markers. And if it detects anything greater than one to two millimeters of movement, then the collimators block the source. And then you have the option to bring the patient out and give them a rest and then eventually go back in, or they will block the sources. And if the patient coughed or maybe had a sneeze or something like that, then they'll eventually go back to the correct position and eventually those will unblock the sources. But that is an overview of the Gamma Knife. Definitely review this pretty closely. It's something that is a fairly common device, something that I could see them asking you. So it's, I have a good idea to, even if you don't have any clinical experience with it, know the theory, know how it would work in some of these things we highlighted today. Thank you for watching and happy studying.